Hello, everybody, and welcome to a special conversation here on the Outer Banks. We're up in Kerala today. Congressman Dr. Greg Murphy. Congressman, thank you, as always, for visiting the Outer Banks. I know you've got a big district. We're glad you're here. On a personal note, we're glad to see you up and moving. I know you've had some surgery. It's great to see you resting and feeling better. I appreciate it very much, Clark. And, uh, you know, I always tell folks in D.C. that in boast that I've got the most beautiful district in the country, we have the beach. And so it's always blessed to be here. Well, thank you. And I know you just finished up an interview with a national media outlet. So how kind of you to make some time for sure. us today. I thought we'd talk broadly about anything that might be on your mind. As we think about the Outer Banks, we think about things like fishing and tourism. I know we'll touch on that. Number one, transportation, infrastructure, anything out there that you think resonates with you across your district right now? I, I think the important things that we look for the Outer Banks are bridges. Um, we also, you know, I work desperately. We have the Army Corps of Engineers on speed dial for dredging because of inlets, which water, wind, and sand can kind of clog up. But we're looking um, not only at two things, and this is working with the state officials also, the Alligator Bridge, which we were just talking about, which is old, antiquated, and uh, really can be a hazard, especially if, you know, if we have hurricane evacuation conditions. And the same thing, uh, you know, which has been talked about for more than 30 years is the uh, bridge coming from across the current day. And so uh, these are things that are important for northeastern North Carolina and the coast, and working uh, federal officials and working with state officials are trying to get those things done. I think I heard you say you've got, in terms of coastal homeowners, your district is one of the largest coastal districts in America yeah. as measured by miles. And number two, number two uh, coastal miles uh, in- includes, you know, our inland waterways and everything. Yeah, that's incredible. Well, Steve Scalise has number one, but I always uh, make his is a bunch of bayou that people can't live. Well, there you go. So. <laughs> coastal homeowners, coastal businesses. I know you've done some legislation recently bipartisan legislation around coastal homeowner insurance. Yep. That's clearly something important to you. It, it's critical because, you know, when we have uh, erosion, which is happening uh, in our coastline, especially here at the Outer Banks, it, it's one thing uh, for beach renourishment, which is what everybody wants because we want to, you know, have places to go and enjoy the, the, or the beach. But if you have homes that are falling into the ocean, uh, we need to figure out a way where um, we, do, we, we remove them before they fall into the ocean and become a public hazard. You know, it's thought to, that these things, uh, you know, the timbers and the wires and everything can go eight miles down the shore. So it's not only a hazard to, um, you know, individuals who want to enjoy the beach, but it's also a maritime hazard. So removing those homes before they fall into the ocean, making sure that those homeowners have access to funds to do that um, is going to be critical. And that's what the legislation's about through the National Flood Insurance Program. We thank you for doing that. I've always admired your practicality in terms of a problem solver. I know you're very proud to describe yourself as a physician first and a elected member of Congress second. Are you optimistic around beach nourishment, federal dollars, or are you more pessimistic? Well, uh, you know, I, it's just going to take a while because working with Deer County, I, you know, they request for me to, for assistance, which I can't do without their without their request. So, of course, we have to always do our environmental studies. I'm um, working with the National Park Service um, to try to expedite that before they can put, you know, beach on the sand, or excuse me, you know, sand on the beach. Perfect. And then number three for today, I, again, respect your time. What's on your mind as a federal member of, of Congress in the United States? I know you and I had talked about NOAA, the National yeah. Oceanic and Atmospheric Association. Yeah, this is a real problem. Um, if uh, NOAA has decided basically through fiat um, that any vessel 35 foot and longer can go no faster than 10 miles an hour during certain periods of the year out to 90 miles an hour out at sea. And, you know, this is to protect the right whale, and we all want to protect the right whale. But what they're going to do through fiat is destroy the eastern North Carolina boating industry, not only for recreational, but for also commercial fishing. And since 2008, there have been five whale strikes um, in that many years through these particular, um, you know, the vessels. And so it's literally a lightning, less than a lightning strike incidence. And so why don't we not use a, a smarter way through sonar, through radar of catching these whale pods, which we want to preserve, but not absolutely destroy the eastern North Carolina fishing industry, which is what will happen. Uh, it's going to end up in the courts. Uh, we've been, I've been fighting it for two years. Uh, Noah's not been listening. Um, really, I am very uh, upset about this. And this is where, I'm sorry, this is the weaponization of government. This is something... Um, through the bureaucracy that is anti-democratic and it is it just doesn't make any sense. 
Congressman, we love your active voice in Washington, D.C. If any of our viewers would like to contact you or your office, we've always had a great relationship with your staff as well. Yeah. What's the best way to get a hold of your We have a, a website, which is Murphy dot at house, or excuse me, murphy.house.gov, which is our main website. Um, uh, and uh, that's really the best way. We take in all the letters and everything else um, and respond to them as quickly as we can. You and your team have always been very responsive. Thank you for joining us today. We respect your time. We appreciate and value your public service. So thank you for watching. Dr. Congressman Greg Murphy, always a pleasure, and thank you for being here. Thank you so much.